All right, let's set the stage. Picture this. Four heroes from modern-day Japan get summoned into a whole new world. Now, you might expect the one with the cool hair and handsome face right there, check out the guy on the left, to be the main character. But surprise, surprise, it's actually this guy who steals the spotlight. So, here's the deal. This stunning princess with gorgeous long blonde hair drops the bombshell that the three heroes were summoned by the King of Racer to take down the big bad demon king. The mage dude lurking beside the princess spills the beans about their insane abilities and stats, and guess what? They totally overlooked our main man at first. Typical. You see, the first three heroes are all magic powerhouses, with the first one being a holy sword user, and the others being exceptional magic users. But our protagonist here, brace yourself, his special ability is, drum roll please, wait for it, online grocery. Yeah, you heard that right. What in the world is that gonna do in a fantasy realm, huh? We're about to find out, my friends. So, the three heroes were all set to meet the king, and you know our main man couldn't resist getting in on the action. Oh, and by the way, everyone, including the protagonist, knew that they were summoned from another world, just like those crazy isekai light novels we love. Here's where things get interesting. While they're all talking to the king, Mudoko starts feeling a tad suspicious about the whole situation. I mean, he's not feeling that hero vibe, you know. So, he politely excuses himself and straight up tells the king that he just wants to live a chill, simple life. After scoring a cool 20 gold coins from the king, Cha-Ching, Mukoda hits the streets like a boss to try and get some intel. Guess what, though? The peeps on the street can't help but give him some serious side-eye. Can you blame them? If you time-traveled from the past, you'd be clueless about modern suits, too. So, after doing some serious sleuthing, our main man Mukoda decides to hit up an inn for some well-deserved R&R. But then, out of the blue, he remembers this crazy skill of his. Like, what on earth could it possibly be, right? Cue the epic moment. Status. Open. Boom. A fancy status screen pops up, showing all of Mukoda's info. But here's where things get wild. At the bottom of the screen, there's this option called Net Supermarket. Nukoda's like, hmm, might as well give it a shot. And, as soon as he selects it, an actual online supermarket website pops up right in front of him. Like, dude, it's just like how we do our online shopping in real life. Talk about convenience. Nukoda starts interacting with the website, placing orders, and even making payments. And you won't believe what happens next. Like magic, a box appears out of thin air, filled with the stuff he ordered. It's just a bottle of water and some bread. But I mean, that's a superpower that's actually useful. Let's keep it real. This skill is next level awesome and seriously convenient. Imagine having the power to order stuff online and have it appear right in front of you. No more waiting for delivery trucks or dealing with crowded stores. Mukoda's got it all figured out. Mukoda is keen on exploring this new world and sets off an exciting journey to the town of Kiel's. While on the stagecoach, Mukoda starts a friendly chat with a merchant sitting next to him. He casually mentions his plan to cross the border and explore the neighboring country. Oh, and here's the kicker. He finds out that his special ability is as rare as finding a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Talk about being one in a thousand. Unfortunately, when he arrives at his destination, he learns that the stagecoach has stopped servicing customers. Bruh. He speaks with some locals about the situation, and he learns they've stopped the service, so people can't flee to neighboring countries. A gentleman tells him if people fled, the army's size would decrease. Another one tells him that the Kingdom of Racier plans to wage war against other territories. With a spring in his step, Mukoda heads to the Adventurer's Guide, ready to put together the ultimate dream team for his adventure to the Fenin Kingdom as he doesn't want to travel alone for fear of being attacked by monsters. 
The guild cashier tells him it would take days to complete and will cost him eight gold coins since the stagecoach is suspended. And you won't believe it, luck is on his side because he finds the perfect crew. Meet Werner from Iron Will, the coolest C-rank adventurer in town. Mukoda makes them an offer they can't resist. His incredible cooking skills for the whole journey. I mean, who could say no to that? <laughs> Werner then introduces Mukoda to the squad. Vincent the swordsman, Rita the scout, Ramon the mage, and Franca the healer. It's a full-on Avengers Assemble moment, but with cooler outfits. During a chill moment, Mukoda puts his culinary skills to work. He whips out his magic stove straight out to the net supermarket and starts conjuring up some mouth-watering sandwiches and soup. The squad is shooketh by the flavors, and let's be real, even I'm drooling just thinking about that sandwich. It's another day in the heart of the forest, Wikoda and the Iron Will crew find themselves in an epic showdown with a monstrous red boar. It's like a boss battle straight out of a video game, and they emerge victorious, basking in their triumph. Mukoda, always the culinary genius, suggests stashing that red boar meat in his mystical item box, ready to work some culinary magic for dinner. Before we delve into the deliciousness, let's first talk about the recipe, shall we? Mukoda's got his game face on as he whips out the bacon, sizzling it up in a pan like a pro. Then come the veggies. Cabbage, carrots, and potatoes he snagged on a killer discount. And let's not forget the star of the show, sausages galore. It's like a flavor explosion waiting to happen. And voila! Pot a few is served, and mouths start watering faster than you can say yum. Little did they know, Mukoda's food is more than just a tasty treat. It's a power-up in disguise. The Iron Will crew starts feeling a surge of energy coursing through their veins. It's like they've been granted superhuman abilities, all thanks to Mukoda's secret cooking prowess. But shh, let's keep that under wraps, shall we? They chow down and are oblivious to the danger lurking nearby, a large beast with glowing eyes silently watches them, as another day draws slowly to a close. Werner, the master of camping, decides it's time to pitch a tent for the night, and guess who's on dinner duty once again? You got it. Lukoda, the culinary hero of the hour. With that juicy red boar meat, he whips up another mind-blowing feast that has the crew's taste buds doing a happy dance. But hold up, there's a twist. Out of nowhere, the legendary and feared Fenrir makes his grand entrance. This mythical creature wants a taste of Mukoda's divine cooking. And let me tell you, this scene is really hilarious. Mukoda cooking up a storm while Fenrir can't stop gushing about the delectable dishes. Bite after bite, Fenrir's hunger knows no bounds. Mukoda's culinary skills have won over even the fiercest beast in the land. And guess what? Fenrir, the legendary and fearsome beast, is absolutely blown away by Mukoda's culinary skills. He's so impressed that he proposes a deal with Mukoda. I mean, who saw that coming? Mukoda, with a mix of skepticism and intrigue, reluctantly agrees to the contract and gives Fenrir the name Fel. From that point on, Mukoda isn't just a chef anymore. He's become Fenrir's very own food bureau. A special bond is forged, and their culinary adventures are about to reach a whole new level of epicness. In the last episode, we were treated to a delightful feast thanks to Mukoda's culinary skills. Plus, there was this whole deal with Mukoda signing a buddy contract with Fenrir, a creature so legendary it probably has its own fan club. Now, the big question is, what's cooking today? Well, I'm as thrilled as a hungry squirrel in a peanut factory to find out. Now that Fenrir is Mukoda's BFF, best furry friend, Mukoda needs to give the beast a name. After a few name ideas get chewed up and spit out, Mukoda finally settles on Fell, which actually suits Fenrir surprisingly well. Fast forward to the next day, and Mukoda's kitchen mission hits a snag when he realizes there's not much red boar meat left. But here's where it gets belly laugh-worthy. 
Mukoda casually asks Fell, this fierce Fenrir, to go fetch some meat. Yep, you'd heard that right the big bad wolf is now Mukoda's meat fetching buddy. Everyone's jaws hit the floor, because I mean who would have thought? Fell is a Fenrir, and folks in this world usually run in the opposite direction when they see one. Talk about a brave chef. Fenrir, or should I say Fell, returns in the blink of an eye with a colossal rock bird, a B-rank monster. I feel like he's faster than a fast food delivery. Then, Mukoda works his culinary magic and whips up a rock bird teriraki with onion soup for the Iron Will party and fell. I don't know about you, but this dish looks so good that even my screen is drooling. Lol. Oh, by the way, did I mention this is Mappa's first dive into the Isekai anime world? Combined with their cozy art style, it's like they're serving us a buffet of mouth-watering visuals and culinary ASMR delights. Anyway, after that mouth-watering teriyaki adventure, they continue their epic journey. Remember when I mentioned that in this world people scatter like spilled marbles when they see a Fenrir? Well, I wasn't kidding. I mean, just check out how folks are dodging them. Finally, the gang arrives at the border of the Fenan Kingdom. But what do they find? A whole battalion of soldiers on high alert, all because of Fenrir's grand entrance. One soldier steps up to Mukoda and asks if he's inked a deal with Fenrir. He warns that Fenrir packs enough punch to turn a whole country into crumbs. And that's no fairy tale, my friends. It's a historical fact, at least in this world. But then, Fell in all his furry glory, chimes in and basically says, You be us be, we leave you be. It's like a beastly peace treaty. Mukoda adds his two cents, threatening to withhold food if Fell decides to go on a rampage. And that right there is their unbreakable bond, Food is the magical key to taming this wild creature. And just like that, everyone's inside the kingdom. But here comes the next snack. Mukoda's wallet is feeling lighter than a feather as he foots the bill for their entry into the kingdom and its bustling cities. Luckily, Mukoda's not planning to hang around here for ages. Nope, he's got bigger dreams, jet-setting to different places and raking in cash with his net supermarket mojo. Honestly, I think Mukoda is quickly making his way to the top of my favorite characters list. I mean, kudos to him for not falling for that hero gig from episode 1. Speaking of which, shame on the king for letting Mukoda slip through his fingers. Just think about it. He could have been the most overpowered king in history if he'd hung on to Mukoda right. He could order anything from the modern world, and everything modern humanity has come up with would certainly be worth a fortune in their era. While strolling, Mukoda gets ambushed by Marquess Rindle's servant. The servant puts on a friendly face and invites Mukoda to the Marquess's mansion, but let's be real, they're just looking to harness Fenrir's colossal power. After Bell gives him a little scare, the servant takes off like a rocket. And while everyone's still gossiping about Fell's jaw-dropping abilities, he spills the beans. The only critter that can give him a real run for his kibble is an ancient dragon, and they have already had a legendary smackdown 400 years ago. Well, after that, the Iron Will party and Fell decided to part ways because they don't share the same goals. I must admit, I'm feeling a bit blue about Mukoda splitting from Iron Will, but hey, they're pretty prominent in the opening credits, so I'm guessing we'll be seeing more of them this season. And remember back in episode 1 when Mukoda decided to use his online grocery skill to make a buck or two? He's all about selling goods from modern Japan to rake in that fell. To really get those sweet merchant perks, Mukoda decides to throw in with the Merchant's Guild. It's this big continent spanning organization, and the merchants are ranked into five levels. He also throws his hat in the ring with the Adventurer's Guild. Why? Well, that's where you go when you got a furry friend like Fell that brings you goodies from the hunting grounds. These guilds might be a big deal in Mukoda's newfound life. To keep his Adventurer's Guild membership active, he's got to tackle missions every month. His first mission is gathering some medicinal herbs, 
Not only could this keep his guilt status intact, but it might also level up his cooking game with some new ingredients. And let me tell you, the Adventurer's Guild is a real hoot compared to the Merchant's Guild. That lady at the counter is definitely clocked out mentally. Although, to be fair, the Adventurer's Guild receptionist in the previous town wasn't exactly a bundle of sunshine, either. Maybe it's because Mukoda was a client and not applying as an adventurer at that time. After sorting out guild business, Mukoda checks into an inn with Fel, who promptly reminds him that they skipped lunch. Good thing they've still got some of that rockbird meat left, which Mukoda plans to cook up. Now, it's time for the main event, the cooking extravaganza. Gordon Ramsay, you can take a seat. Mukoda's got this. He's craving rice, and thank the heavens for Mukoda's online shopping skills. You wouldn't believe how many isekai anime heroes have to jump through hoops just to get their hands on some rice. All Mukoda has to do is a bit of online clicking, and he's got rice ready to cook, complete with a rice cooker. If that were me, I'd probably order every cake in the universe. But Mukoda's got a different plan. He's cooking up some steak. A rare one for Fel, and a medium one for himself. The secret ingredient. A soy sauce with all sorts of flavors, plus garlic, onion, and more. It's downright mouth-wateringly delicious, and I'm over here drooling, wishing I could whip up something half as tasty right now. Fel scarfs down his food like a ravenous monster, and I'm willing to bet he savored every bite. Well, it's time for Mukoda to chow down on some rice and fried meat. And you know what? It seems like Fel wanted in on the feast too because he was eyeing Mukoda's meal like it was the last steak in the universe. And in just a blink, he polished it all off, rice and steak included. That's a Fenrir-sized appetite for you. After this food frenzy, it's finally time to hit the hay. And Nukoda reminds us that it feels like forever since he slept in a proper bed. The next morning, he heads over to the Merchant's Guild to sell some extra goodies. He does laying around specifically salt and pepper. You know, it's quite the surprise. After watching episode 1, I had this feeling Nukoda was about to venture into the soap business. But lo and behold, he goes with something rather different salt and pepper. It actually makes a lot more sense. As it turns out, Mucoda's packing the good stuff, the creme de la creme of salt and pepper, the kind that could even grace a king's table. And guess what? The merchant he encounters practically showers him with money, giving him a whopping 17 gold coins in exchange for the mere 5 copper coins he spent to purchase it online. Now, that's what you call a deal that's so good it's practically shouting us to yon kiss. Now, I can't help but think, if Mukoda keeps this up, he might single-handedly wreck this world's economy. His supermarket power is like a magic wallet with an endless supply of cash. He could buy up all the metal deposits in the world, and the locals would just be scratching their heads, wondering where all their money went. Then it's dinner time once more, and they're savoring that same delicious steak. Mukoda cooks it up for Fel. And while doing so, he uses his appraisal skill on him. Surprise, surprise, Fel gets some incredibly high scores. Even though Fel's a powerful monster and all, Mukoda still sees him as a bit of a glutton. And with that, another enjoyable episode comes to a close. Earlier, we witnessed Mukoda's extraordinary summoning into a world brimming with magic and swordplay. Now you might think he's there to join in the epic battles and cast grand spells, but note because Mukoda is not your typical sword-swinging hero. Instead, he's got a skill that's so ridiculously convenient it might just make you jealous. Are you ready for this? His special skill is none other than online grocery. What? I can hear you asking, what kind of skill is that? But trust me, if I were in his shoes, I'd be thanking my lucky stars for this super convenient ability. Imagine ordering all your favorite groceries online in a world filled with adventures and magic. In the last episode, he joined a group of adventurers with the aim of crossing the kingdom's boundaries. That's where he made a rather unexpected acquaintance, Fel, a Fenrir, 
a massive wolf-like creature. The beast had been stealthily watching their every move. And once it caught a whiff of the mouth-watering feast, Mukoda was cooking up. It just couldn't resist revealing itself in front of the entire party of adventurers. You see, Fenrir had an insatiable appetite for delicious food and so he turned to Mukoda and made a rather peculiar request. He asked Mukoda to cook for him, and once he tasted the food it was like a culinary love story come to life. Fenrir was head over paws for Mukoda's cooking. In fact, he loved it so much that he struck a deal with Mukoda. The terms, Mukoda would become Fenrir's personal chef, providing him with scrumptious meals every single day in exchange for protection. You could say it was a foodie's dream come true, and Fenrir wasn't taking no for an answer. The rest of the explorer gang was utterly flabbergasted, but secretly delighted by this unexpected twist. Now here we are, stepping into the heart of today's episode. Mukoda, fresh as a daisy after officially donning the title of Adventurer's Guild member, is embarking on his very first mission, which is Herb Collection. As Mukoda diligently goes about his green task, his trusty companion Fell transforms into a full-blown predator, scurrying the wilderness for a meaty treat to satisfy his carnivorous cravings. But Fell was a bit worried because there's a lot of pesky monsters lurking. I mean, we wouldn't want our hero to become a monster's midnight snack, would we? So Fell steps up to the plate and whips out a nifty skill named Sora, effectively creating a magical barrier that ensures Mukoda's safety. With that security in place, Mukoda unleashes his appraisal skill, carefully identifying herbs and checking off his mission with the grace of a seasoned pro, and he does it without even breaking a sweat. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, lunchtime. Even though it might be a tad early for lunch, Mukoda decides to take the modern route. He orders ingredients from the net supermarket to whip up a lip-smacking batch of spaghetti. Just looking at those ingredients is enough to get anyone excited, and to make things even better, Fell returns with a freshly caught rock bird. It seems that Teriyaki from the previous episode won Fell's culinary heart, and now he's eager for more. Fell even mentions other prey he's caught that's been left at the forest's edge, adding to the culinary intrigue. Mukoda slices up the onions, tosses the pasta in boiling water, and brings all the ingredients together. And there you have it, a piping hot plate of spaghetti. It's a work of culinary art, smooth and oh so mouth-watering. Even with a bit of a meat shortage, it's enough to make Fell's tail wide with sheer excitement. And let's not forget the cheese. That's the secret weapon to elevate the spaghetti to another level. Honestly, watching this anime, you'd think it's a full-on cooking tutorial. <laughs> If you've ever been clueless in the kitchen, Mukoda can be your new cooking sensei. And you know what? Mukoda may not have all the answers about how to get back to his world, but at least he can savor the familiar flavors he knows and loves. And when I saw that tasty pasta, it made me really want some spaghetti. Can you blame me for feeling that way? It looked absolutely mouth-watering, and I'd bet my stash of ramen noodles that you're craving Get some too. In my belly. Here comes a truly jaw-dropping moment for Mukoda. He's hit with an absolute mountain of meat, thanks to Fell's impressive hunting spree. I mean, we're talking a mountain of mouth-watering monster meat here. But oh boy, Mukoda can't help but worry about one thing. Are orcs actually edible? We've all seen how orcs are portrayed in modern media, and it's not exactly in a gourmet light. That's nasty. Mukoda swiftly stashes all the monster meat into his handy-dandy item box and heads off to the Adventurer's Guild for delivery. And guess what? Fel decides to let Mukoda hop on his back for a wild ride. Mukoda goes from thrill to near blurred face mode due to the breakneck speed of this mad dash. Finally, they arrive at the Adventurer's Guild. The secretary girl at the Guild is clearly impressed by Mukoda's ability to gather so many herbs, even as a G-Brank newbie. She might just be Mukoda's potential love interest, but when she lays eyes on Fell, she does a complete 180 and there's some serious blushing going on. 
It's like she's fallen head over heels for our furry friend. Our hero Mukod asks where he can butcher the meat since there's a ton to handle. He decides to bring all the monsters to the back of the guild. And his plan is to keep the meat for cooking meals for Fell and sell off the remaining monster parts to the guild. He pops the question to the butchers, wondering if he can snag some meat for dinner. And wouldn't you know it, both Fell and the butcher recommend trying orc meat. Mukoda manages to secure a small amount of orc meat for tonight's dinner while the butcher gets to work on processing the rest of the monster bounty. Just looking at the meat, it doesn't seem too shabby, sort of like pork. And here we are again at our favorite part, cooking time. So what's on the menu today? Mukoda is whipping up a pork piccata dish. Now pay close attention because here are the ingredients, cheese powder, parsley, eggs and some flour. First things first, slice that meat thinly. Then, add a sprinkle of salt and pepper. Beat the eggs and give the meat a light flour coating before dipping it in the egg. Cook it up to golden perfection. Delicious. And voila, dinner is served, thanks to Mucoda, making it all look incredibly easy. Plus, there's still some leftover meat sauce from that mouth-watering spaghetti earlier, so they drizzle it on top. It looks incredibly delicious. In fact, it's so good that I started shouting, Mume! Fell takes a bite and we all know how much of a glutton he is, he loves it. Just when Mukoda is about to dig in, Fell reminds him that orc meat is even better than red boar. Mukoda is still a bit wary of orc meat, but with one bite in, he's now convinced that he's savoring premium pork. It's a classic case of don't judge a book by its cover, but in this case, it's a food version. Don't turn up your nose at a dish until you've tasted it. Fast forward to the next day, and Nukoda heads back to the butcher to collect his bounty. And boy, is it a haul, just look at all that meat. Nukoda ends up raking in 202 gold coins for his items, but he's utterly clueless about the market value of these goods. Thankfully, the butcher plays the role of educator, explaining the worth of the various items. Orc testicles are prized for stamina and health. Red boar skin can be transformed into leather, and tusks have their crafting uses. To top it off, the butcher even tosses in some magic stones from a rank and higher monsters. And you know what? I really appreciate how the butcher is portrayed here. In many other series, characters like him would be portrayed as unscrupulous individuals looking to take advantage of a clueless MC or rob them blind. But this butcher is genuinely kind and goes out of his way to explain the basics to Mukoda. It's a nice change of pace. Thank you, kind sir. Anyway, Mukoda realizes that being a nomad is the way to go. He learns that if he introduces Fell as a great white wolf, then they can avoid cubious stares. On the journey, they take a spontaneous pit stop for dinner, and trust me, it's a real carnivore's delight. Thanks to Fell's monster hunting skills, Mukoda's got the gold to go big on this meal. He orders a mountain of meat online, but that's just the appetizer because Mukoda's donning the chef's hat and things are about to sizzle. In a delightful twist meatier than a juicy steak, Mukoda unveils a seemingly modest Japanese black wagyu steak. But here's the kicker. This small piece of meat costs a whopping two shiny silver coins. This isn't your ordinary meat though. It's beef from the modern world. I really feel that in this fantasy realm, they don't dine on cows, which is why Fell's response to this revelation is absolutely priceless. He's utterly flabbergasted to learn that we raise cows here for meat. You see, in their world, they rely on hunting monsters for their carnivorous cravings, so the concept of cows is a delightful novelty for Fell. With Mukoda's culinary masterpiece before them, both Mukoda and Fell savor every bite, and what's even more astonishing is that Fell's convinced that every mouthful of Mukoda's cooking makes him feel stronger. He dreams of taking on the ancient dragon as if it's a mere appetizer, and just to drive home the point, Mukoda uses his appraisal skill on Fell, and let's just say the stats are pretty darn impressive, almost off the charts. Now after their carnivore's feast, Fell isn't one to just sit around, idly. Nope, 
He's got the itch for adventure, so he puts his Sora skill to good use and goes oh, on a monster hunting oh. spree while Mukoda gets all cozy in his makeshift bed. While Mukoda's off in Dreamland, Fell's out there in the wild slaying monsters with style. Morning comes and Fell returns with an even grander haul of powerful monsters. Even a chimera falls victim to Fell's prowess. This time, it's a meat mountain and it's quite the feat. Mukoda realizes it's time to cut back on the Japanese black wagyu beef for Fell. After all, even a wolf's got to watch their waistline on this meaty journey. As Fell and Mukota sit down for dinner, they start chatting about Fell's exciting adventures, where he kicks monster butt using his claws and even magic tricks. Mukota's eyes light up with envy, and he wishes he could do magic too. Surprise, surprise! Fell spills the beans that Mukota can indeed use magic. Anyone can, as long as they have mana. Excitement kicks in as Mukoda checks his stats and discovers a bit of mana magic hiding in there. Fell gives Mukoda the lowdown. If he wants to work some magic mojo, he's got to speak it into existence. Unfortunately, Mukoda's initial attempt at casting a fireball is a total flop. Seeing his buddy struggle, Fell decides to lend a magical hand air, I mean paw, helping Mukoda feel the flow of magic in his veins. Then Fell gets a fantastic idea. He thinks Mukoda needs some real-life action, so he throws him into the magical fighting ring with a bunch of goblins. Talk about trial by fire! Mukoda tries to run, but Fell, being the prankster he is, startles the goblins, leaving Mukoda no choice but to face them head-on. It's like a crash course in magical combat. At first, Mukoda's like, nope, I'm out of here. But he eventually pulls himself together and manages to give those goblins a little taste of his magical might. And might I say, he lets off some pretty powerful explosions. Our Mukoda is an action hero in the making. Unfortunately, our hero's mana takes a bit of a beating and he promptly takes an impromptu nap, leaving Fell to clean up the goblin mess. After he awakens under the starry night sky, Fell and Mukoda start to have a bit of a squabble about Fell throwing him into the deep end with those goblins. But after Fell drops the bombshell that Mukoda has leveled up, there's an instant mood lift. In a generous gesture, Fell hands over the lifeless body of a goblin king as a reward, complete with a magical stone as a bonus. Turns out, Fell's got this nifty skill of spotting monsters with magic bling thanks to this high-level status. And with magic stones in the mix, things are getting interesting. In exchange, Fell puts in an order for a home-cooked meal. But Mukoda realizes he's running on empty in the mana department, making cooking a drag. So what does our clever hero do? He whips out the online grocery app, opting for a hassle-free solution by ordering some delectable pastries in all shapes, sizes and flavors and extra buttery melon bread for the both of them. Because let's be honest, who wants to deal with cooking when there's been magical fights and munchies at play? At first, Fell's not too sure about diving into the world of sweets, but eventually he gives in and takes a liking to them. Now he's hooked and asks Mukoda for more, but Mukoda being the responsible one, cautions him about the perils of overindulging in sugary delights. According to Mukoda, too many sweets might just land fell in the land of tummy troubles, diabetes, and even tooth decay. In response, fell confidently credits his allegiance to the wind goddess, Ninrir, as his secret weapon against the sweet-induced chaos. According to him, Ninrir's got his back, and her blessing shields him from the evils of poison, diseases, and all things wonky. Fell spills the beans on his wind powers, but it's Ninrir who helps him fine-tune those skills into something truly spectacular. In a hilarious turn of events, Mukota insists that he's the one in dire need of a blessing. His reasoning? Well, according to him, Fell's already a powerhouse and doesn't need any divine intervention. So there's Mukota, belting out pleas for a goddess's blessing at the top of his lungs, 
while the goddess herself watches the spectacle from a water well, wearing a smirk that says it all. As the dynamic duo stumble upon a city, things take a hilarious turn because of Fell's ferocious vibes. They unintentionally create a bit of a ruckus, catching the attention of everyone around. To make matters extra interesting, the city guards mistake Fell for a mere great wolf, not recognizing his true Fenrir status. To which Fell takes offense because, let's face it, a Fenrir is ten times mightier than your average great wolf. While Mukoda, trying to keep things low-key, decides to let it slide and avoid unnecessary attention. After all, a Fenrir is quite the spectacle and a bit intimidating. However, Fell is having none of it. Using their telepathic communication ability earned through the bond of being familiar and master, Fell communicates with Mukoda, vehemently opposing the idea of going incognito. Luckily, in the end, their unique connection helps them breeze past the guards. But here's the catch. The guard gives Mukoda a stern warning, laying down the law. No hurting folks or swiping stuff, or Mukoda's in for a heap of trouble. Anything his wolf gets caught up in, the city will hold Mukoda responsible for. And so the adventure continues, filled with sweets, spooky vibes, and a dash of caution in the bustling cityscape. Mukoda drops off Fell at Elmira Inn with a mission to find a shop selling maps. In his quest, he stumbles upon a magical intro book, thinking it's a gem. Excitement turns to a slight shock as the cashier tags it as pricey due to being made from one of the rarest commodities, paper. Meatless and a bit disheartened, Mukoda returns to Fell and decides to turn things around by ordering up some tasty grilled bird and pork cutlet. As per usual, Fell is super impressed with the food, no surprise there. I mean, who wouldn't be? The double sauce action makes it as delicious as late night ramen is for a starving college student. But wait, there's more. Mukoda takes it up a notch by throwing in some rice soaked in that yummy sauce. And guess what? Fell is all in for rice too. It's a flavor explosion that's hard to resist. Even my belly is grumbling and mouth-watering at the sight of their enjoyment. The next day dawns and Mikoda stumbles upon a bustling tavern. In a genius move, he befriends some experienced adventurers by lubricating the social wheels with a round of drinks. Mikoda spills the tea about his not-so-great kingdom of Rijsegar, where the king has a knack for war and expansion. As tales of dungeons and rival kingdoms flow, Mukoda brings up his elusive map quest. One generous adventurer, probably fueled by the drinks, offers a map for a gold coin. Mukoda, thinking he struck gold, gladly accepts it. But little did he know, as the adventurers bid him adieu, what the harsh truth was. And as laughter echoes through the tavern, he slowly wises up. He could have snagged a similar map for just a humble silver coin at any adventurer's guild. Oops, Fell and Mukoda, feeling clueless about the laughter echoing behind them, forge ahead with their plan to head east. They have no idea that a mischievous blue slime creature is keeping a watchful eye on their every move during their unsuspecting meal. While all this is happening, there's this goddess peeking at Fell and Mukoda from somewhere up there. I don't have all the dates on her, but it looks like she's the one who turbocharges Fell's superpowers. As they speed along on their journey to the east, our friends take a pit stop by a cool lake to try their luck with fishing. Now, Fell pulls off a slick move. He zaps the lake with a bit of electricity to make the fish practically jump into Mukoda's lap. Talk about a shockingly smart fishing strategy. With their catch secured, Mukoda whips up a delicious feast, turning those fish into a mouth-watering meal. And don't think Fell's just lounging around. Oh no, he's in the woods, gathering up some firewood to make sure they got the flames roaring for a perfect lakeside cooking experience. And hold on to your recipe notebooks, because what's cooking is seriously delicious, and I'm about to spill the beans for you to jot down. Mikoda's in charge, and he's ordered a culinary arsenal of salt, pepper, wheat flour, mushrooms, and butter.